This is Sean Devine with Applied Acoustic Systems. In the previous strum tutorial, we covered how to play rhythmic strumming patterns using loop mode. One feature you may not have discovered yet is the live MIDI loop control. You can access this feature by clicking MIDI located underneath the MIDI activity indicator. We can now make various controller assignments to utilize different effects. For instance, we can route the modulation wheel to have strum play softer. Strum can be used in loop mode on a sequencer track. In this case, the MIDI data that you record is telling Strum first which chords to trigger and second which of the seven loops to trigger in the selected loop pack. Now it's important to note that loop mode operates according to its own triggering behavior, and one has to be careful for playback to work as expected. To avoid any potential timing or sync issues, the best approach is to organize your arrangement into sections. Make sure the playback starts at the beginning of a section. The section should also start with the loop key triggering the desired loop and coincide with the beginning of a chord progression. In this tutorial, we'll cover using loops in a more flexible way with your sequencer to avoid these constraints altogether. By using Strum's loop drag feature, we can have much more control over the patterns being triggered. It's also possible to combine Strum loops and edit them in your sequencer for infinite variations. First, let's go over how to transfer the MIDI information from a loop pack to your sequencer. Once you've found the loop pack you want to use, Click and hold the MIDI drag area of the strum interface. Simply drag the MIDI file icon into the strum track of your sequencer. The MIDI drag feature copies the MIDI information recorded in the MIDI loop onto the sequencer track. This information corresponds to the sequence of strumming keys used to create patterns. In order to play back this data, we need to switch strum's play mode to guitar. Now, the MIDI data will trigger the strumming keys. You will notice that in playback, all we currently hear are muted strums or clicking noises. This is because we are not yet telling strum which chord keys to use with the strumming pattern. Now, we can record our chord keys either on the same MIDI region with the strumming keys or on a different track, which is routed to the same strum instance. You can record on a different track and combine the MIDI regions later. So let's go over a few scenarios for when the loop drag feature is particularly useful. First, let's say you like the first three bars of the loop pack, but you want to end a certain section with a more intense pattern for the last bar leading into the chorus. No problem. Simply drag the loop pack into your sequencer, and now the one we will use for the chorus transition. Let's now take a look at the MIDI patterns and combine them in our sequencer. Using the Cut tool, I'm going to create a custom pattern using the Join shortcut to combine the two different loop packs. Refer to your sequencer for the specific key command to utilize the Join feature. There, that's better. Next, let's say we like the feeling of a particular loop pack, but we'd like to change the strumming pattern to better fit the feel of our song. All we need to do is use loop drag to import the MIDI data to our sequencer. Now, we can edit the MIDI data to work the best with our song's arrangement.
let's make some adjustments to this drum pattern. I can duplicate some of the strumming notes to make our pattern a bit more complex. Then, I'll remove some of the arpeggio notes to better fit my idea. Loop mode is a very powerful performance and songwriting tool on its own. However, Strum's loop drag feature opens up infinite possibilities. It gives you total control to precisely edit and rearrange strumming patterns included with the factory sound bank.